Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai, India. The next two talks, I'll address the role of trace metals in health and disease. What is a trace element? Trace element is one that makes up less than 0.1% of the total body mass. They can be obtained only from the environment and cannot be synthesized in the body. They may be metallic or non-metallic. The metallic trace elements can be further subdivided into essential and non-essential. The non-essential are not always present in the body. The essential trace metals are the inorganic counterparts of vitamins. They may form an integral part of an enzyme and they are called metalloenzymes or they may only activate an enzyme. So they are needed for normal physiological functions. They are even present in the RNA. All metals can cause human disease through deficiency, imbalance, or toxicity. For today's talk, I have chosen only one essential trace metal, selenium. Selenium has an atomic number of 34. It was discovered by Jons Brazilius in 1817. His daily requirement for humans is about 55 micrograms. The metal is named after the moon, selene. Due to its excellent photoconductive properties, it is used widely in electronics and in the glass industry. It is also present in animal feeds, in grains, food supplements, cereals and meat. Certain soil samples contain excess of selenium. In some parts of China and Venezuela, the groundwater may contain excess of selenium, just as excess arsenic is found in the groundwater in parts of Bangladesh. So there are many environmental sources for it, selenium. Paradoxically, selenium deficiency is found in some parts of China, in the province of Keshan, where the soil content of the metal is very low. Selenium deficiency can manifest as Keshan disease, which can present with multifocal myocardial necrosis with low levels of blood selenium. Children with Keshan disease have multiple hypopigmented patches. The disease is cured by giving selenium 2 mg per kilogram per day. Pathophysiologically, in selenium deficiency, glutathione peroxidase levels are very low and this enzyme plays a critical role in the control of oxygen metabolism, particularly the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. Selenium toxicity or selenium excess is called selenosis and it can be either acute or chronic. Acute selenium toxicity due to environmental contamination is reported in some parts of the world like China and Venezuela. In Venezuela, there exist certain varieties of trees of the Lecithus species which produce very tasty almond-like nuts within hollow wooden pods hanging from the branches of the trees. The locals call these nuts paradise nuts. Whether it's due to the exquisite taste of the nut or whether ingesting it may land you in paradise, we do not know. The tree itself is called the monkey puzzle tree. Monkeys love these nuts but they are unable to climb the tree because of the very rough bark outside. And even if they do manage to find a few pods, they cannot extract the nut because the opening into the pod is very small. But the little monkeys sometimes put their small fingers through, extract the nut and enjoy their last meal on this earth because they soon die after ingesting. So the, the natives therefore shun these nuts, however tasty they are. And they also warn tourists to avoid them. Many decades ago, an explorer to their region ignored the warning of the natives and ate the nuts, not unlike Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden apple in the Garden of Eden. And this was followed by fever and shivering and then he had diarrhea, pain in the joints, loss of appetite and extreme weakness. After a week, his hair started falling from the scalp first and then eyebrow, eyelashes mm -hmm. and all over the body. And just as Adam and Eve went looking for a fig tree leaf, this man had to go looking for a wig to cover his bald scalp. Unfortunately, after a few months, he completely recovered from all his symptoms, including the hair growth, unlike the poor monkeys, which invariably died. Mm -hmm. A trichogram in the early stages of hair fall showed anagen and fluvia. The dermatologist, Francisco Curdle Vegas, who saw this patient, was intrigued by the history. So he collected the hairs from the patient's scalp and he went to the same area which the tourists had traveled collected samples of soil and the pods from that area, brought it back to his lab and the pharmacologist there 
found that there were very high levels of cystocellinonein in the hairs and both the soil in that area and the pods, the, the nuts in the pods were very rich in selenium. So pathogenetically, cystocellinonein has a high selenium but low sulfur content. The cytotoxic effect of cystocellinonein on mammalian cells can be reversed by the addition of L-cysteine. So putatively, the cystocellinonein interferes with the utilization of L-cysteine for hair protein synthesis. Selenium also interferes with the disulfide linkage of the keratin bond. Chronic selenium toxicity has been reported after prolonged and excessive intake of nutritional supplements, some of which contain large amounts, 200 times the required daily dose of selenium. In chronic toxicity also, alopecia occurs in 70% of cases and also a diffuse grayish pigmentation as well as brittleness of the nails. One third of these patients have a garlicky odor to the breath, whereas in acute toxicity, all 100% of patients will have this garlicky odor. Investigations, serum concentrations of selenium is more than 2 milligrams per liter in toxicity, whereas in normal people, it's less than 0.34 milligrams. There's increased excretion of selenium in the urine. Unlike in arsenic toxicity, levels of uh, selenium in the hairs are unreliable because of the widespread use of selenium containing shampoos. Management. Dimer caprot, that is BAL, and EDTA, which are helpful in many metal poisonings, do not work for selenium toxicity. Paradoxically, they worsen the symptoms. Hemodialysis has helped a few of these patients. So, with the addition of supra-pharmacological doses of selenium in the so-called food supplements, and with increasing environmental pollution, one should keep in mind the possibility of selenosis in patients with unexplained hair loss.